Hello, I'm today going to do a quick little bit of advice uh, regards asking academic questions. Uh, it's recently been an assignment deadline for my beloved students and as always before a deadline there are lots and lots of panicked questions uh, which, you know, tend to slightly clog up my inbox and make me want to kill myself. Now, I believe very passionately that there is no such thing as a stupid question, and I'm very, very happy to always answer questions. It's lovely, actually, to be asked questions. Uh, that is my job as an academic, to ask questions and to answer questions and to try and find out answers and discuss and debate and share things. Uh, and that is, of course, what the main job of our students is while they're studying. So questions are lovely, they should be celebrated, they are wonderful. So please don't think that I'm putting you off asking questions. However, can you tell us however come in? However, I've got four quick pieces of advice um, that maybe you should ask yourself, question yourself, <laughs> before you ask a question. Number one, is this really a question that you're asking or is it actually reassurance that you're seeking? Now, if it's the latter, and if you just want to ask something so you know you get a pat on the back or you get a nod, you know, sort of, bit of a massage that makes you feel better about yourself. I don't know whether that's something that really you should be asking, um, you know, your lecturer or your tutor for, because they are, of course, quite busy. There's no such thing as a stupid question, but there is such a thing as a tired and overworked and grumpy lecturer like myself. So if you're just looking for reassurance, go to a colleague, go to a friend, phone home. I'm sure they miss you while you're away at university uh, and, you know, do it with them. University is hard to get your head around. I certainly struggled during my undergraduate. It's very independent. You're supposed to be learning um, under your own steam a lot of the time. So it's quite hands off in terms of the input that you have uh, from lecturers and tutors. Um, and you should be doing your own independent investigating and not always needing reassuring and nurturing. It's uh, tough, but it's learning to fly the nest, I suppose. Number two is is this the sort of question uh, that a very quick search of the internet um, or a quick scan through your module handbook can give you the answer to? So, for example, I get lots and lots of questions asking over and over again of how long the assignment is, what the mark scheme of the assignment is, uh, whether you can go over by 10%, how you should format references, all that type of thing. And it could save us both quite a lot of time in going through a long email exchange if you just looked at the module handbook where I've carefully put all this information down and most lecturers at most universities are required to do this. We have to fill out these module handbooks, we have to fill out assignment briefs, we have to give mark schemes and make them available. Uh, and so before you ask us, have a quick scan through because all it tells me is that you've not been bothered to read the module handbook, uh, you've not been bothered to listen during the lecture when I've been telling you these things, and so it does set alarm bells ringing that maybe you've not been paying attention and putting effort in, which is not something you want to make your lecturer think shortly before they're going to be marking your assignment. Number three, the third piece of advice was that there's maybe a time and a place to ask questions. Now, in the classroom, it's brilliant if you can be asking questions. Please do that. Don't be shy. You know, put your hand up, speak up, heckle. Obviously, different lecturers like different uh, interactions and exchanges, uh, but I personally love them. I think most lecturers do. There's, it helps to break up the session. It helps to get discussion going and debate flowing. And it's really good to have a live interaction, you know, a one-on-one -on -one where you can ask your question. I can follow it up. I can give you some answers. If you're still confused and if I've not explained it properly, you know, you can ask further and we can keep probing into more detail. So it's a really great opportunity to do that. Also, what's nice is that other people can benefit as well because they can listen in, they can chip in, they can you know, hear the answer and that might help uh, them to understand something that they were also wondering about. And they, of course, can also then join in the conversation with their own questions. So it's mutual, it's shared, it's taking part with other people. And that is really what the classroom environment is all about, a two way conversation. So if you can do that in the classroom, I think that's good for everybody and it's a generous thing to do. If instead you save up all your questions and then you email them in dribs and drabs, uh, it's not really the best forum uh, for asking things because it's quite hard to give a spontaneous detailed answer through the medium of email. Uh, nobody likes answering their emails, nobody likes writing them. 
Uh, so, you know, you might not get as erudite an answer as you would have got in person. And also it's slightly selfish because it means that other people uh, are, ask, are not going to benefit from this. If every single person asks individually, that's very time consuming and, you know, it limits that whole discussion that we're supposed to be having when we're at university. Finally, my last piece of advice, number four, is, because lists are important on the internet, so you've got one, two, three, four, and it's clickbait and everyone goes through it. Number four is be polite, be nice. I've talked about this before, but just smile a little bit. You know, try and be cheerful, try and be a bit upbeat. I have people that come to my office, ask a question, and then they, you know, sit there chewing gum, actually texting on their phone right in front of me whilst I'm trying to answer the question. And, you know, it's kind of rude, kind of an asshole thing to do. Um, also, can you really do your Amazon shopping at the same time as listening to my answer? Maybe you can, maybe you can't, I don't know. But I do suspect in them situations that the person is only coming to me, again, for reassurance, maybe to show their face, maybe to even intimidate me, I don't know, to demand that they get a high mark. Don't do demands, that's not a question. I can people also do that. Anyway, so be polite, smile, be nice, and you're much more likely to get an answer and to get a detailed answer. It's all, we're all human, let's interact, let's be good. So, is it a question or is it an assurance? Is it something you can find out easily elsewhere? What's the other one? What was the other one? What was number three? Oh God, I can't remember. Oh, which is the right forum for asking that question where there's a time and a place for every question. And number four, be polite and be nice. Thank you very much for listening. Hope it's useful.